Again, guys, if, if, if I go uh, again, if I go a little too fast, uh, you got to make sure you take pictures and uh, get these as we go along. OK, we got our go blue on page 15 or 16, 16 or 15. Um, number one, what climate type? I'm going to forget the assignment due Friday, the climate graph assignment. But for number one, uh, what climate type are savannas? Did you have that angel? The angel got uh, headphones out and ready to go. OK, appreciate it. Yep. AirPods. So number one, what climate type includes savannas? Not dry. Think of an, another one. It's going to be tropical. Exactly, guys. So number one, we have tropical climates. Those are for savannas. We see oftentimes with elephants and zebras and lions and, and all that stuff in the um, African savanna, right? Um, so, and sub-Saharan Africa. And then number two, what climate type is the most common type uh, that is making up, that makes up one third of the planet? It's going to be dry. Fantastic job. So most of the planet is going to be dry deserts. Um, and with that being said, that's maybe not a great thing. So outside of the ocean, most of the planet is deserts. Um, so with that being said, Angel, how is climate maybe changing? Is it getting cooler or warmer? Getting warmer, which is going to cause uh, what uh, side effects? So if it gets warmer, uh, what's going to happen to the, the North and South Pole? Melt, which is going to cause sea levels to rise. And then other things, we get wildfires, mass extinction, and more deserts. So what's going on? Scientists are saying that climate change is occurring in such a manner that it's getting warmer, right? Getting warmer. Uh, this is causing ice caps to melt. This is causing sea levels to rise, causing more wildfires, uh, which is causing mass extinction, loss of a lot of animals and creatures, okay? and more deserts. So make sure you got that down, guys. As soon as my in-person students are ready, we will um, we will move on to our table of contents, which might be the last update the table of contents yet. And I'm gonna look for my first question to see what we got here. We'll use this one. We'll use this one. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and move on from that. We've got our table of contents. Update that if you haven't already. Add pages 16 to 17. Climate change, human impact. Climate change, human impact. 16, 17. As soon as our in-person students are ready, we'll begin our first practice question of the day. It is, a, it is an old topic, but a new question. So, I've had a lot of classes having a tough time with it. We'll see how you guys do. Again, uh, just as another update, we're probably gonna have a um, on our online test and our online notebook checks are going to take place the week after spring break. That last week, those are gonna be our final grades for the quarter. Let's do our first question of today. We can see here, uh, which of the following statements is false about plant impact on climate? Which is false? So of these four, only one is wrong. Is it A, pollen helps create clouds? B, transpiration decreases precipitation? C, impacts temperature and precipitation? Or D, decreases temperature by absorbing sunlight? Which one of these is going to be the only statement that is false? That is false. Please answer in the chat for participation. I will give shout outs to those who are right after uh, 10, 15 seconds. A, B, C, or D, guys, make sure to answer. Make sure to answer so I know you're paying attention. One second. Okay. Thank you, Lakia. Thank you, Damiona. Thank you, Giovanni. Joseph, Tatiana, Yorkies. This question, I'm not a fan of this question. It gets it gets a lot of students. Well, we got to know it, though. Uh, five seconds, five seconds. Again, this is for participation. I'm keeping track of the names who's answering. Three, two, one. Thank you, Diego. All right, guys. So um, a lot of us said the letter A, but here's the thing. The letter A is incorrect. Is correct. Pollen does help create clouds. 
Pollen picks up the moisture and builds a cloud. The wrong answer is B. Transpiration, the wrong, the wrong, the false statement is B. Transpiration is when leaves release water out of their pores. That's going to increase rain, not decrease it. So letter B was the incorrect answer. And surprise, for the first time this year, nobody got it right. But it's a tough question. I think the best I've had a class do today is a 40%. So one of our tougher questions there. Right. Let's go ahead and move on then to our uh, first topic of today. Let's see what I got. Maybe did I skip anything? Maybe. Nope. Okay. Again, these are the questions we need to answer on the back of our climate graph. So you got the line graph, the bar graph from the numbers and the videos and the documents I, I posted for that. And then we've got these seven questions. Just write the number and then your answer to those. Okay. Again, all described in our video before. I want you guys to go ahead and go to uh, back to page 15. Go back to page 15 where we left off on um, La Nina El Nino. Okay. I want to talk about how space impacts climate. Okay. So what causes angel the, the, the earth seasons? Earth what? Earth's tilt, right? So um, I want to talk about something that's going to reverse earth seasons. So only write down what's in red on page 15. Only write down what's in red for today. So earth is spinning. Earth is orbiting. But it's also going to be uh, tilting. And when it's spinning and tilting, it's going to actually wobble from where it's at. Okay, It's going to be wobbling. So kind of like when you spin a top and the top starts to slow down, it's going to kind of shake and wobble, right? Our planet steadily does that continuously. And this actually, the tilt causes the seasons. It's like a very slow, it's like a steady kind of shake as it spins, right? And you kind of see it here. We see that, like, it doesn't stay straight on its axis all the time. It's going to actually kind of do a wobble as it changes positions, too. So um, this is going to cause the seasons to reverse. So on a potential test question, always remember this. Tilt causes the seasons, okay, but the wobble reverses the seasons. And this happens every 26,000 years. So in 20,000 years, our summers and winters will switch. We'll have summer during the end months and winter during the middle months. As strange as that is, that is what happens. Okay. So again, the wobble, only writing down what's in red. Earth's wobble causes seasons to reverse. Yep, only right now what's in red. Yep. So when our in-person students, again, only write what's in red. Only write what's in red. You don't need to write all that stuff. Earth's wobble causes seasons to reverse. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out the video for that, that that's going to explain that better to us. We'll see the Earth wobble. It's going to play the first a minute and a half of this, guys. So the Earth is wobbling. How does that work? How does that happen? And the he the Earth's axis points at the North Star, and the heavens have been revolving around that star since the dawn of time. Except they haven't. When the Egyptians built the pyramids, the North Star wasn't our current North Star, Polaris. No, it was Thuban. Why did it change? It's because the Earth's axis is moving. This motion was first discovered by Hipparchus. He was looking at the positions of the stars and comparing them with their positions a century earlier at the same time of year. He found that the stars were moving at least one degree every century. What could be causing this motion? When you're riding a car and the car turns, you feel oh. an acceleration. <laughs> In the same way that you experience an acceleration when a car turns, there is also an acceleration as the world turns. This acceleration works against the force of gravity. So you actually weigh less at the equator. And you weigh more when you're at the North Pole, 1% more. This also causes the Earth to bulge. The Earth is 26 miles wider at the equator. So again, the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It's actually bulging at the equator. 
and this causes it to lose balance a little bit and wobble as it spins. It doesn't fall off, obviously, like a, like a top does, but it's going to, again, wobble because it's spinning and tilting at the same time. Because the Earth is not a perfect sphere, See that? the gravitational force of the sun isn't perfectly balanced. Uneven. One side of the Earth gets tugged just a little bit more, and this causes the Earth's axis to spin, completing one revolution every 26,000 years. So you see that? That's the wobble that you see. That's that circular axis spin as it's, so it's spinning and tilting, which makes it wobble. Okay, there we go. Uh, so again, that's going to reverse the seasons. The tilt is going to create the seasons. Let's move on to our next topic. Uh, we've got solar activity, very straightforward and easy. Again, if the sun is more active, is that going to make it hotter or cooler? Hotter, right? The sun's going to make it hotter. So real quick, just write what's in red. Solar activity. Have you heard of solar storms or solar flares? Yeah, flares. We're going to learn about that in the future soon. But just know, again, if the sun's more active, it's going to make uh, our planet a little warmer. Right now, it's a little less active, but it's still getting hotter. Why? Because because humans, we are making things. Oh, one second. Uh, humans are, uh, it, it, because of our, our, our greenhouse gases that we're burning, right? So just write what's in red, guys, below where we have Earth wobble. Again, we're talking about how space changes climate. Um, how space changes climate, right? Low activity, lower temperatures, high activity, higher temperatures. Let me look up. Let's see if I can um, find a quick video clip here. A short one that's really, really uh, informative. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, sun stuff um, right at the get-go, right? Uh, let's see. Solar activity. Let me see here. Um, give me one second. Give you guys a little breather here. Okay. So let's take a look. Here's some uh, really cool footage here of some solar activity. Uh, of these solar flares spewing off the surface of the sun. I think, is there some music to it, maybe? Not sure what music that is. But you guys can see, again, that's the, that's the sun being more active. Satellite imagery, we see, again, this is all plasma fumes uh, jolting out like lightning bolts, except it's going to be like, fire bolts essentially not lightning bolts right so if this stuff gets really active it can make our planet slightly hotter so really beautiful footage here and these are like all these are like all electrical currents that flow out of the sun but it's got it's more like fire currents right really really cool stuff just spewing off the off that right at unimaginable temperatures there's like a little fire rainbow we're going to all those very soon. Okay, let's continue then uh, with our next topic, which is orbit. Here's a quick question, Angel. Does the um, Earth orbit in a perfect circle? No, it does not. So what I want you guys to do, I'll get only write what's around. It's the most writing you'll see all day. I want you, after you write this, you need to draw this down here. I need you to draw these two shapes. Okay? Now on a test question, when you're asked what shape does the planet orbit the sun? Don't say circle, say elliptical or ellipse. Always say elliptical or ellipse. So it's kind of like a kind of like a lean oval. See that? So again, these are both ovals, but one's a wider oval, the other one's more of a lean, skinnier oval. Okay. So also notice, does the sun sit in the very middle of the orbit? Sit in the very middle? No, it's going to sit either slightly to the left or slightly to the right. The sun's never in the very middle, like you see in all those little diagrams. Okay. So again, Earth's orbit is going to orbit in an ellipse. It's like a skinny oval or a wide oval. Okay. Make sure to draw that when my in-person students are ready. We'll move on to our next topic which is all about volcanoes. Got two more topics today, two more topics. Okay. 
two more topics. All right, and I'm gonna show you a quick video of what that ellipse is gonna look like. Okay. All right, so let's take a look what the orbit's gonna look like, guys. How is it all gonna be? Okay, how does the planet orbit? Let's check it out. Very, very, brief, very brief video, but let's let me see here. Okay. Again, like I said before, notice the sun is not in the middle. It's a circular oval, like an egg a little bit. And then also notice, Angel, what happens to the planet as it, as it gets closer to the star? It does what? It speeds up. Why do you think it speeds up near the sun? Because there's more what near the star? More gravitational pull, exactly. So, guys, again, the sun sits on the sides, not the middle. And it is in a, it's in an oval elliptical. And it's going to speed up near that star. Really cool stuff. Okay. Uh, let's check out volcanoes, guys. Do you think volcanoes are going to make it hotter or cooler? Everybody says hotter, right? But volcanoes are actually going to make things cooler. Do you have any idea as to why that is? No? Because when, when volcanoes explode, they release what in the atmosphere? Lava and ash. And what does the ash do to the sun? It's going to block it and make it colder, right? So volcanic ash... Okay, volcanoes make things colder. On the test, when you see volcanic activity, what does it do to climate? Always say it makes it colder. Okay, why? Because the ash blocks the sun, makes it cooler. Okay, it's going to lower the temperatures. And also all that ash, it's going to ruin the clouds and make it drier. Ash is going to absorb the moisture from the clouds. Okay. So lowering temperatures, blocking the sun, and making things less precipitation, less rain. Okay. Big topic, big issue with that. Okay. We'll have one, we'll have one more card question. Let me see if I got another one here. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Give you guys a moment. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Sorry for rushing you guys. Okay, let's move on and let's check out how volcanoes change climate and actually make things cooler. One second. Eruption in recent history. 200 years ago, Tambora, a volcano in Indonesia, blew its top in the most violent eruption in recent history. Damage from the volcano and an associated tsunami was immense. Perhaps 100,000 people died immediately or starved in the aftermath. The effects on the wider world, though, were even greater. Like all large eruptions, Tambora's was to change the climate around much of the planet for years. But just how do volcanoes change the climate? Eruptions spew out not just lava and ash, but also gases. Indeed, it is these gases trapped under great pressure in molten rock that give an eruption its explosive power. For the climate, the key gas is sulfur dioxide. Once it gets into the stratosphere, sulfur dioxide from a volcano mingles with water, forming tiny sulfate particles. These particles reflect some sunlight back into space, and the surface below cools. They also absorb some sunlight, warming up the stratosphere. These temperature changes have big knock-on effects. A cooler surface means less evaporation, and thus less rainfall. A warmer stratosphere means stronger jet streams. In the year after Tambor's eruption, scientists estimate the stratosphere's sulfate veil caused a 3% drop in rainfall and cooled the planet by 1 degree Celsius. That is a temperature drop in one year twice as large as the long-term warming the Earth has seen over the past half century. The climate upheaval caused a hiatus of the Indian monsoon, drought in southern Africa, and widespread crop failures in Europe, where it was known as the year without a summer. No one can say when an eruption large enough to have such drastic effects will happen next. That one will happen, though, is a certainty. So again, volcanoes, the gases and ash blocks the sun makes it cooler and also makes a lot less rain, causing some droughts. Again, the last super volcano eruption that was in history was 200 years ago. I think they said it was in uh, Tambora. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not sure 
where exactly that is, but um, again, last one we've seen there at that location. Okay, let's get to our last topic of the day before we finish up with the question. Last one, last one. Uh, we did a volcanic activity already. Uh, we've got to talk about ice age, ice ages and interglacial periods. There's a difference. Last thing of the day we're going to write down and call it a day here in a moment. Okay. Ice ages and interglacial periods are different, right? Uh, there's been many ice ages throughout Earth's history. We'll get into that with our video next. Okay. Um, but also there's what our ice ages are long periods. We know this, right? Long periods of really cold climate, really, really cold. Like Earth has had no ice before, and it's also been a planet full of ice, covered in ice, right? Like a snowball planet. So, um, but the, the warmer periods of that, where there's a little snow melt and then the ice kind of shines out, that's going to be called interglacial periods. So intermittent warm periods within an ice age. Here's a question for you, Angel. Do you think there will be another ice age at any point? No, maybe not. Okay. Um, based on Earth's history, I think it's likely that we will have another ice age. As to when, it's hard to know. But that doesn't mean we, if we still are like burning fossil fuels like crazy, well, that doesn't mean the air is still bad or the water is still bad. You still want to keep the air clean and the water clean, right? It doesn't matter if it's getting colder out. You don't want polluted air and ice and water. So either way, we got to keep things cleaner. Um, but let's go ahead before I show our last video clip of the day, which goes into um, goes into whether we might have another ice age. Let's do our last question of the day real quick, real quick. Okay. And everybody, if you were listening, should get this question right. Okay, let's see here. Need more time, Angel? You're good? Okay, well, uh, we're done with notes for the day, guys. Let's go ahead and do a question, then a video, and then we're gonna, then I'm gonna do attendance again. Okay, last question of the day before we watch our video. In what way does Earth orbit the sun? Is it A, circular, B, elliptical, C, oval, or D, a figure eight? This should be a piece of cake question for you guys. Please answer in the chat. I wanna see almost everyone get this one right. Nice, nice, good job, Angel. Uh, let's see in the chat, this is participation points, Diego, Giovanni, Sanaya. I think I had maybe, uh, Lakia as well. What way does earth orbit the sun? What's the shape? I need more people. Yorkies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 10 seconds. You need to answer guys. Participation. Damiana. Thank you. Joseph. Thank you. Daniela. Thank you. Tatiana, thank you, thank you. Four, four three, two, one. In-person student said elliptical. B is correct. I got to give shout-outs to Angel, Tatiana. Um, let's see here. One second. 